Think of it as an umbrella, an upturned umbrella, like in the in the wind and the spokes point out. So you have the spokes of the umbrella pointing out. Now, when the spokes of the umbrella point out, they can act as sources of information, just the way you have raindrops coming down and it goes into a funnel. Now, crowdsourcing is taking the raindrops of information or drops of information from various sources, from SMS, email, web, Twitter, other sources, funding it into a central location, going through a verification process, uh, vetting some of that, it's vetting that information, and then visualizing it so that you have an idea of what is going on where. Um, that is uh, classic crowdsourcing and the idea of involving the crowd or the public in sending you information about a specific problem. And how and who does it really help in a humanitarian crisis? It helps, first of all, first responders because the first responders do not have the time to go through massive amounts of information to find the signal from all these pieces of massive information. Because there's a lot, when, when a crisis happens, there's a lot of activity. So give me an example, maybe from, from around here, where this has actually achieved something concrete in a, in a humanitarian situation, crisis. So the history of Ushahidi is actually tied to what happened in Kenya in 2008. Now, that was a very tragic situation where more than 1,200 people lost their lives because uh, of contentious elections. Now, that was 2008, and that's when we prototyped Ushahidi. And even then, we were able to get more than 300 reports uh, from different IP addresses, and it gave us quite a distribution. In 2013, uh, in March of this year, we crowdsourced information regarding the election. And the idea here is how could we turn citizens into observers? Could they tell us where, what was happening where? Now, we were able to get over 5,000 messages. And some of those messages we worked actually in conjunction with the Red Cross locally. Are you at all concerned that the voices that are being heard via this method um, are, again, one type? There must be very many, the elderly, the very poor, the very vulnerable, whose voices could never be heard through this kind of thing. Crowdsourcing is not the end-all, be-all of, of outreach that you've got to have an offline strategy, a mobile strategy, and an online strategy. That way you can reach people wherever they are. So let's start with offline. Offline outreach can take very simple forms, newspaper ads, um, barazas. These are community uh, dialogue where you, you, you speak with the chief or you put together a, a small forum in the village or uh, in whatever area you, 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 you work in. That strategy works brilliantly when you have the mobile part and the online part to complement the offline strategy. So it's not a very simple thing. Crowdsourcing is just a small part of this information ecology that needs to happen in order for um, information to flow more efficiently. All of the things that you're talking about, they are tools, not goals. So I'm wondering what your goal is. As an organization, our goal is to provide ways that citizens can engage and can share their stories from wherever they are. When citizens are involved in solving the problems that afflict them, we actually see citizens as a resource. They're not just people that need to consume information. They are part, they're creators and participants in, they can be creators and participants of solutions. Now, 
it is it is impact on many levels its impact is on an individual level if we can assist someone to get a piece of information that is useful for them fantastic but even better is when a community be it the environmental mapping community the anti-corruption mapping community the humanitarian community if we can help those communities process information from citizens and to derive value and to provide assistance, that's our goal.